Yo, what is up, YouTube? This is Silky Smooth coming to you with another episode of The Smooth Experience. And today, I just wanted to end up sending out a video, just kind of like an update of a few things that are going on in the crypto world. Just, uh, just let you guys can stay updated with what's going on. So yeah, so anyways, the first thing that I want to cover is um, I found this cool way of finding out the cheapest transaction fees all around. And I feel like, you know, transaction fees are something that we all have to pay and we all have to deal with in our lifetime. So something that I thought that was really cool is that I found this online and it is pretty awesome. So this is called BitcoinFees.21.co. And so basically what this is showing is this is like basically just showing the rates of the different transactions as they're going around the network and basically just kind of showing you where the most optimal transaction is so it even says here like which fee should i use the fastest and cheapest transaction is always the fees that you want to use because that gives you like a balance of being able to like uh trade fast as well as not spending too much on the transaction so if you didn't already know what you can do is you can prioritize your transactions on the bitcoin network and other crypto networks so that that way they could get to the recipient faster and the only um, difference in that is that you have to pay a higher fee but yeah that's still better than me having to go to the bank and having to do wire transfers and wait and have me having to be patient due to business hours and due to holidays and other holidays that I don't even choose to recognize but I would still be forced to I guess like you know abide by because my money would be going through like channels that I don't control and so because of this you know making your fees are really good making your fees really low as well as making sure that it gets there pretty fast is the balance that you want to always maintain and yeah what I've been looking at is like the fastest the cheapest transaction fee right now is currently 200 satoshis per byte shown in green at the top and for the median transaction size of 226 bytes, this results in a fee of 45,200 satoshis. So, yeah, basically it just shows that, like, you know, some of these are just not as profitable or, I'm sorry, not as profitable but not as efficient in striking that balance that we were talking about. This one right here is the one that strikes the balance. And if you want to learn more a little bit about that, like, you can go into it you know, like these instructions here to end up reading more. But, yeah, basically this is something that I was just kind of interested in. I'm going to be looking a little bit further into it because, yeah, transaction fees, they're a pain. And I would love to be able to avoid them as much as possible. So, yeah, this is a very, very good website that I think is just a valuable tool that I'm bookmarking. And I just wanted to go ahead and share that with you guys. It's BitcoinFees.21.co, and I just think that's an awesome, um, it's an awesome app, or I'm sorry, it's an awesome website. Next thing that I wanted to cover was that I used to use Bread Wallet for my iPhone, and I I use iPhones because I used to work at Apple. I could go into so many things on why I like that, but um, aside from me using used to work there as well as it being pretty secure. Um, I found that another good wallet that I'm starting to switch over to is called Mycelium Wallet. Mycelium Wallet is awesome. <clears throat> and so basically, I used to use Bread Wallet, but Mycelium Wallet I found to end up just having like kind of like a nicer user interface. And it was easy for me just to kind of like access the information that I needed to right away, um, right there on the main screen. And the other cool thing about Mycelium Wallet is that if I was to ever get an Android phone and install it on that in the future, I can actually install the wallet to the SD card that I could slide into the Android phone. And so, yeah, like I think that's really, really cool because then I could end up having like an offline wallet. My plan would be to pretty much have like an offline wallet that would be stored on an SD card. And that SD card I would put, you know, like either in like my own personal cash or like my cash of like um, valuable paperwork and things like that. Or I could end up putting that like in a safety deposit box. And that SD card would be able.
able to keep a ledger of the coins that are being sent to it and I could constantly send coins to the address that's scanned to that SD card and then the next time that I go to the bank for example or I go to my personal safe my personal cash I could end up pulling that SD card out I could pop it into an Android phone say like I don't need it doesn't even have to be 2017 it could be like 2020 it could be 2025 and I could pop that card into a phone and that phone would connect to the network and it would download the transactions and it would download the blockchain and it would see all of the transactions that I've been sending to it so that by the time that my wallet fully syncs up with the blockchain it would be ready with the current balance of all of the coins that I've been sending to it so that's kind of like a like kind of like a side quest if you will, something that I kind of want to do on my own where like in the future I would want to end up having like a wallet that I'm watching. And the other cool part about that is that I could use that address and I can watch that address in other apps on my phone or on my computer so that anytime that I do send money to my, um, to my SD card wallet, I could see that transaction actually applying on the network and without even needing the SD card with me. So that's just like a the huge benefit, and in my opinion, that kind of leapfrogs all the features that the banks are trying to offer people right now. And you'll be seeing, you know, mark my words, in the future you'll be seeing banks trying to trying to offer the exact same type of technology, the exact same type of features, because you know they want people to end up coming to banks. They want people to um, continue to use fiat currencies and fiat notes that are still centrally controlled, and that you know, are still something that, you know, you don't have control over, that you always have to end up going to a central bank or going to a bank with the right credentials and the right scores and the right, just so many qualifications to use that currency that it's just going to become obsolete soon. So that's the way that I'm seeing it. That's actually a big reason as to why I call this the smooth experience, just because, you know, this is going to be something that's going to be documenting my journey while I'm alive here, and I'm trying to make my journey kind of like, you know, the path of least resistance, and I'm trying to be like water, and I just want to end up making sure that, you know, if there is some resistance, that I'm trying to find a way to deal with it in the least stressful way possible, and so you'll be seeing me using things like alternative currency as soon as I possibly can, and any time that I can find a reason as to why the old fiat currencies are obsolete, why they take too long to send money, why you have to use different versions of it in every country, um, that's, that type of stuff is just giving me excuses even more so to end up using cryptocurrencies. So I'm super excited to end up um, being in the future. You know, we're in the new world. This is all about cryptos. It's all about, you know, decentralization. It's all about having complete power over your own money and that's exactly what I'm about and this is uh, this is just part of it so yeah that's why I'm calling this a smooth experience embrace the journey with me so yeah another thing that I want to end up talking about was in my last video I was talking about how I was removing my bitcoins out of the exchanges and you know I can say that I did that and I followed through with what I was going to say but at the same time, on the August 1st, I was getting emails, and actually even a couple days beforehand, I was getting emails from the exchanges saying that, hey, we're going to go ahead and deposit twice as many Bitcoin, or as many Bitcoin as you have into your account as Bitcoin Cash. I thought that was a cool idea, but at the same time, I just didn't want to end up jeopardizing any of my funds. So I pulled them off, pulled them offline, and I put them into my own wallet. So... What I can say looking back at that is, yes, I feel like I should have ended up keeping that on the exchanges because then I could have made double the money and maybe not double the money, but I would have double the assets. And to me, I'm all about options and having more of those assets gives me more of those options. And now that I'm seeing how the fork played out this time, I definitely will not be making the same decision next time should a fork happen to Bitcoin as well. So, hey, lesson learned. You know, you all, we all live and we learn. We're all babies crawling through life. That's what I say. And, um, yeah, so next time that that happens, I will definitely be making sure that I have my Bitcoins ready to go, my positions, 
will be um, pretty much all in Bitcoin or whatever other cryptocurrency is about to fork. So what's, what I learned from this is that any time that a cryptocurrency is about to fork, even a major one, um, I should actually put my money towards that because, you know, there might end up being the possibility of me getting double of my coin from that fork learning from this Bitcoin experience. So that's what I learned there. Next thing that I wanted to talk about real quick is that I got an email from XBTCE. And I would love to show you guys, but I'm not going to show you just because it has like personal information on it. But I got an email from XBTCE uh, a couple days ago basically talking about how they're going to stop supporting U.S. customers. And to me, this is something that is kind of alarming. But in the same time, I know that, you know, it's all an adventure and that I'm embracing everything and that everything will work out great. But, yeah, I got an email basically from them saying, um, we need you to move all of your funds out of XBTCE and put them into other exchanges because we're no longer serving U.S. customers. And, in fact, we've already closed any U.S. customer accounts. You have to prove to us that you already had your account in order for us to move the funds that were in those accounts to any wallets outside of those accounts. And if you had your account closed and you're not in the U.S., they're asking people to submit documentation proving that they're not living in the U.S. in order for them to give them their funds and open up their account again. So to me, that's kind of interesting just because, you know, I live in America right now. Um, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You'll hear me say that all the time. Everything is a double-edged sword. It's great living here, but at the same time, there are some drawbacks to it. And currently, um, you know, the people that are representing our country – in speaking for our country to the rest of the world, it has a lot of us on edge. It has at least me on edge. And I could speak for myself and say that I had a feeling, and I was able to say this to like my girlfriend. I would say this to friends months ago that you know, as soon as um, our presidential administration changes over, there may be some things that the rest of the world doesn't like, and the rest of the world may start to push us out of their dealings just because of the way that. Our representatives are representing our people and so what I could say is that just XBTCE is the first I've already seen bit the next also start to follow suit and they've said that they're gonna stop supporting US customers and to me I'm kind of nervous about that guys I'm like wondering okay like what what does that mean how many other exchanges are gonna follow suit and is that gonna be enough for our current president and his cabinet to make a move and say, you know, um, I need to end up pivoting here and I need to end up making our laws more suitable to what the rest of the world is using so that that way our people can use cryptocurrencies again. So, yeah, we'll end up seeing exactly what that's like. But, yeah, that's kind of something that I have, you know, in the back burner that I'm really thinking about. Maybe you guys could comment on that below and just tell me exactly, like, you know, what your opinion is. What are your thoughts on this? If you live in America, what do you think? Is this going to continue to happen? How are you going to end up dealing with, you know, should an exchange start to shut you down and not let you participate anymore just because of where you live? So, yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to end up talking about is that I'm going to start posting on Steemit. If you guys don't know about Steemit, I'm going to show you right now. Steemit is kind of like a new version of Reddit, and it's been around for a while. I joined last October, October 2016. I knew about it for a few months beforehand, but yeah, I just think that it's actually something that's pretty cool where, like Reddit, you get to curate and you get to upvote and downvote posts, but unlike Reddit, the posts and the weight that they carry on the site will end up having an equal amount of currency that goes to it. So, um, yeah, take a look at this. These, these posts right here, like this one earned zero dollars. Um, it had zero upvotes, zero comments on it, and the potential payout right now is zero dollars. But if you look down here, here's another one where a guy wrote a article post about steak, mushrooms, and two beers. Like maybe this is like a recipe or something. I don't know yet. We'll see what that is here in a second. But it's already earned twenty dollars and ninety cents. That's the potential payout here in seven days. And so what these posts do is that you'll create a post on Steemit and you'll let it bake for about seven days while people look at it, they upvote it, they see what's going on with it. Then after seven days, the payout 
freezes, and then you can end up taking the money from that. And the way that you do that is just really complicated for me to explain in this video, and I'll be doing it in a future video. And also comment below if I'm explaining this wrong, because I do not mind being corrected. But yeah, see, as you can see, this got two upvotes. It got no responses, no comments on it yet, but it was just made a minute ago. Dang, it was made a minute ago, and this dude's already made $20.90. So, if I need to explain any more, let me know. But this is pretty much the reason why I'm going to be posting on Steemit. It's because, look at that shit, man. Like, nine cents, one minute ago. This is really, really cool how these people have already made money off of their posts. And in my opinion, I could see the future of Reddit and also Facebook and other social media taking notes from what this site is doing right here. Just because, you know, I want to be rewarded for my content. You probably want to be rewarded for your content. If you knew that you were going to be rewarded for your content, it might change the quality of your content. It might change how often you're making content. So this is something that, you know, I, I am going to be getting into. You're going to start seeing a lot of my videos posting up on Steemit. And that way I can go ahead and, you know, make the make the money that I wasn't making before. So, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and go over that. That's another update. Um, another thing that I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys about was just some shout outs just because, you know, in the last like week or two, I have really gone through a couple of transformational changes where um, one of the reasons why I wasn't um, posting was because I went to a music festival. It was amazing. And I ended up finding some very, very good pieces about my personality and just kind of like my niche and kind of like my service and what I want to offer to the world just kind of like those pieces of the puzzle were fitting together for me there. And, you know, um, before I ended up going there, I had a little bit of hesitation to putting my face on the Internet. And, you know, after that, like, I haven't really ended up having too many problems with it just because I realized that, you know, I'm going to be providing a service. I'm going to be providing something great to the world. And um, I don't mind who ends up seeing the face. And, you know, I don't mind whatever ends up coming back to me for – what I put out there just because I'm comfortable and I'm coming from a good place and so I was also learning a whole lot from a few different people this you know over the past period since I posted my last video and I just wanted to give some shout outs first I want to give a shout out to Trevon James uh, this is somebody that is just like man like I just get like general guidance from this guy and entertainment like he just provides me a lot of just like time for when like I just need to sit back and laugh or just sit back and just like think about some of my decisions with that I've been making with cryptos I'll put on this guy's channel and like it's just pretty cool because then it'll allow me to kind of like gauge the decisions I'm making and help me feel comfortable with what I'm doing because in this crypto world as you'll find out a lot of us are finding all of this is brand new all of this is speculation so nobody's really an expert at it yet and you know, you just got to kind of follow these things and you kind of got to just stay up to date with the news and that's how you become an expert. The next person I want to shout out is Chris Dunn. Oh, you might have heard of him. He's getting pretty popular just because he's been in the scene for a long, long time and I've been just lurking and watching his videos and I get general tips from him on how to trade and how to look at the charts and how to read candlesticks. Chris Dunn's pretty cool, so shout out to you, man. Another one that I wanted to shout out to was this guy named Crypto Trading Pro. I watched his videos and I got a couple of cool trading strategies from him and um, I think it's I think the way that he looks at how he trades and the way that he looks at his coins is very aligned to the way that I look at my coin at least the coins that I'm holding that I'm trading with and then finally I just wanted to make a shout out to Michael crypto that guy has a really really cool um, way of looking at compound interest and I am going to start doing some videos in the future, and the Smooth Experience is going to start pivoting big time to making a lot of videos to giving you guys kind of like um, a plan on investing with cryptos that is based on the principle of compound interest. And I'm going to be getting a lot of my information from Michael Crypto. So, hey, like Scarface, you can skip me. Go right to the source. Check him out. And, you know, shout outs to you for putting that stuff out. So anybody that I just listed – Keep doing your thing because you're inspiring me. Now that's that's what's pretty much pushed me through making wanting to make videos right now on the internet, putting my face out there, and not really worrying about like you know the repercussions of that. So I just you know thank you guys. Keep doing the keep doing the good work. 
other than that, I'm going to end up being back here pretty soon with another BitConnect video, just giving you guys an update on where I'm at. And, um, yeah, I'm probably going to end up investing a lot more into BitConnect because I'm already seeing a lot of returns from it. So, anyways, other than that, for right now, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm still learning how to get into YouTube, so you already know what to do probably more than I do. So, anyways, this is Silky Smooth, Smooth Experience, signing out.